okay so today we'll be going over a bit on how we calculate magnification so I have an image that I already prepared on screen I will put up the image that I'm referring to so normally in the lab when you get a drawing assignment one of the first things you have to do is to prepare your sheet of paper your drawing area so some of the tools that you will need for any drawing lab of course you need a ruler pencil compass just have an extra pencil here with a sharper point eraser calculator and of course your sheet of paper the first thing we normally do is draw our field of view so typically we ask for at least a 10 centimeter diameter circle so I just measured on the ruler 10 cent 5 centimeters so a 5 centimeter radius and that will give me a 10 centimeter diameter circle so I created that circle on a sheet of paper and that is the field of view that I'll use to draw the image now the image selected today was a diatom so a diatom from a water sample that we collected was viewed under the microscope and if you remember when we're viewing items under the microscope one of the first things we have to do is to record the magnification that we drew at so the magnification that we're drawing at today is of course at the 40x lens and then you're using also the 10x eyepiece so this is the 40 x objective lens and the ocular lens is of course another 10 times so that means we're drawing at 400 times so the image that I'll be showing on screen is the picture that I've taken using the Chem A Vision Pupil Cam and that image will have a large field of view you see several other cells on that slide but what we're focusing on here is the large diatom closer to the needle so that is the image I drew here now the image that you've been given the picture that is about four centimeters in length when we measure it on the computer I use the number of pixels and the grid on the computer to measure the length so that image projects it at about four centimeters in length and then my image that I have here is about six centimeters in length so today I'll show you how we got the magnification of times 600 so of course a proper diagram we have it here any labelings you would have labeled to the right and then your title diagram showing diatom at times 600 magnification now before we even begin to do any calculations one of the first things you need to know is how to do conversions I'll not spend much time going over that you should be familiar with conversions by now you've done it before in majority of classes but some of the simple conversions when you're dealing with the microscope of course you have to know how to go from a centimeter to a millimeter a millimeter to a micrometer and sometimes especially with electron micrographs you'll have to convert from micrometers to nanometers and then anyone any jump in between these units you'll also have to do also one to take note of is the size of a pixel because we're using pixelated images note that one pixel is about 0 0.265 millimeters you can just google this online and find out how much each pixel um, is actually converted to in whatever unit because some grids on your computer if you're using paint um, or the chemi vision program 
the ruler itself is in actually pixels rather than in centimeters you can actually go in in some programs and change it to centimeters so what i did with the image i'm sharing with you is i changed the ruler to centimeters of course this is a number line showing you basic conversions um you should know how to do this by now and how to move decimal places in order to convert units so of course the base unit here is the meters we're measuring in meters we started at centimeters and as you convert to millimeters micrometers nanometers there's of course that exponential change so 10 to the negative 2 is a centimeter 10 to the negative 3 is a millimeter and of course three more units away three more exponents away is micro and three more from that 10 to the negative 9 is nano but that's just review okay so we have the image here that i've drawn so again the image diagram showing the diatom at times 600 magnification and now i'll just show you how i went about calculating that time 600 magnification one of the first things we want to do of, of course is to measure the actual image so in this case well the image or the, the diagram there is six centimeters and the actual or the specimen that we're drawing on the computer was measured at four centimeters so that is your image that is your actual now we're trying to find m which is our magnification easy way to always remember to convert between the three is to just draw your triangle image is equals to your magnification times your actual so this time we want magnification so it's going to be the image divided by the actual now first let's determine our a so if it's four centimeters at times 400 magnification let's convert that four centimeters to a unit that we can use so normally it's either going to be millimeters or micrometers because we're viewing a magnifying image so four centimeters is equal to 40 millimeters and you can divide that by your magnification of 400 and that means the actual image is roughly 0 0.1 millimeters long. Now we don't want to use a decimal there, so we can further convert that to micrometers. 0 0.1 millimeters to micrometers will give you 100 micrometers. So that is the size of the actual equals 100 micrometers. So that cell, that diatom, if you would research the length of that diatom, it should be somewhere around 100 micrometers. Now the image is 6 centimeters and we convert that to millimeters that is 60 millimeters and we can further convert that to micrometers we want the units to match so 60 millimeters is actually 60 thousand micrometers of course we know it's one cell in the entire diameter that we have here so one specimen for the area that we're viewing so we know exactly that that is 100 micrometers and now we know the image size so to find the magnification now we just do the image divided by the actual 
So it's at 60,000 micrometers divided by 100 micrometers and that gives you times 600 magnification. Notice no units because your units cancel. And that is how I got the times 600 magnification for this drawing of a diatom. Now another scenario that you might encounter is when you're given a scale. So let's say we had an image in this circle. Please note that there is no actual image drawn here. In this case, you wouldn't have to actually know the image in there. We are just going to focus on the scale. So if we're given a scale that a line of this length is equal to 120 micrometers. That means anything that we measure in here, if it's about that length of that line on the scale, every time we move that distance, that's 120 micrometers. Now, if we wanted to find the magnification of the image in here, all we need is the scale and the length of that actual line, which is in this case going to be the image. So the actual in this case is the 120 micrometers and then the image would be the scale line. If we measure the scale line here, that is three centimeters. And again, like I said, the actual is equals to 120 micrometers. Your image, three centimeters. So every three centimeters is equal to 120 micrometers. And again, if we look at that triangle, image is equal to magnification times actual so our image three centimeters if we convert that is equal to 30 millimeters but again we want the same unit so that is equal to 30 thousand micrometers image divided by actual so it's the 30 thousand divided by 120 micrometers and that gives us a magnification of times 250 so anything once we're labeling this diagram of whatever you put in there it's going to be at times 250 mag so anything drawn in here because of that scale would be at times 250 mag hello again students i know that this semester might be a bit of a struggle for some of you i know Quite a bit of adjustments will have to be made as we start preparing for back-to-back -back classes or online classes, whichever one continues for the rest of the semester. But I just want to motivate you to always keep trying your best. Um, we're all science majors here and I think that with a bit of patience and ingenuity, we can solve almost any problem. That is why we study science. We take on that challenge to solve problems that most people will tend to just leave alone or give up on. So for example, with this lab I had a bit of trouble figuring how I would record. I wanted a hand camera but I didn't have a way to hold my phone and still do the lab. But if you take your time, think and look around, you might find creative ways to solve your problem. What I ended up doing, I just got a desk lamp and what these are are some Kinects, they're sort of like Lego and I made my own hand cam, just slide the phone in right there and that's why I shot this video. So again, just stay motivated 
and I'm sure you guys will make it through this semester. Good luck. <laughs>